Hello, hello. All right, it is 5.30. Um, do we have a quorum, Sandra? I think we do, don't yes, we? Yes, we do. Um, then I will call the meeting to order and ask that the attendance be reported. Um, when you have a moment, if you haven't yet already reviewed the agenda for tonight's meeting, please do so. And then I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, moving on. We have two sets of minutes to approve. You might recall that um, Steve had some comments and requested changes to the minutes of the November 16, 2021 meeting. So we'll start with those. Uh, if you've had a chance to review those, um, great. If not, please scroll through them now. And then I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the November 16, 2021 meeting. I motion to approve the Tuesday, November 16th, 2021 meeting. Thank I you. second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, moving on to Article 4, approval of the minutes of the January 18, 2022 meeting. Uh, once again, take a look through those. And uh, after you've done so, I'll entertain a mo uh, motion to approve the minutes of the January 18, 2022 meeting. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Moving on to Article 5. This is the point in the meeting where we acknowledge visitors and those wishing to speak to non-agenda items. We do have the strategic plan update in the agenda, so that'll be next after this portion. So if anyone is here to uh, and would like to make a public comment, Now's your chance to do so. Also, if we have anyone online, we do not. All right, hearing and seeing nothing then, we'll move on to Article 6, which is our strategic plan update. So I'll invite you up to the podium. Welcome. I, I understand you have a presentation for us. Yep. Yes. yes, it is brief. It is brief. Yes, <laughs> we appreciate that. But we're also excited to see it. So welcome. Thank you. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm Danielle Bouchard. I've been on the strategic plan uh, team with McKenna, um, with Chris. I unfortunately had a schedule conflict at the last meeting when Chris was in attendance. So that's why you're meeting me for the first time in person. Um, so very nice to meet you guys. We're excited to be here and thank you for having us again. Um, so this presentation will just briefly go over the uh, results of the first community survey that we did for the strategic plan. Um, as you guys may recall, we did um, a huge mass mailing to every resident in the township. Um, we also did a, a, what we call a blitz um, outreach to different businesses, uh, HOAs, um, community leaders, stuff like that. So um, we're excited to share these results with you guys. And of course, like, you know, feel free to stop me and interrupt me if you have any questions or comments um, on as we move through this. Can I interrupt one second? Yeah. If you um, push number two on that little box under your desk, you will be able to follow along on your computer screen with what uh, they are showing out here. And if you need help, let me know. That was be my next question. If you guys could see what I was looking at. <laughs> it's hope for me, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Yes. Okay, are you guys okay? Yeah. Are ready? Mm -hmm. Did you get it, Michelle? Um, okay, so just a brief uh, respondent okay. overview. <clears throat> uh, for survey number one, that was open through uh, November through January. Again, that included the mailer and then this online portion. Um, and then we had folks who mailed theirs back, which was then inputted by township staff onto the, um, onto the uh, project website to the um, survey monkey portal. Um, overall, we had over 1,800 responses, which equates to about 9.5% of the township's total population. Um, from our experiences, from what we've seen with public outreach, that is really great compared to, you know, with the amount of um, residents that you guys have, the amount of businesses that are here. Um, so that was a really positive uh, outreach effort that we, that we saw for feedback. 18% um, of respondents were age 40 to 49, 19, 50 to 59, 25%, 60 to 69, and then kind of dips back down 18% age 70 to 79. Um, I put in there that most notably, or to note, I should say that the Cas our Cascade Township's median age is 42.5 um, as per the American Community Survey or U.S. Census. Um, so what we've been seeing um, as far as respondent age groups, it's, it's really consistent with 
how the ages kind of break down within the township. Um, so we're kind of seeing a pretty much, you know, even keel of the people that live here or do business here and the responses that we saw. Um, and then I included some other metrics on, on the right hand side here. Um, of course, most people that responded to this live in the township. Um, most are property owners, most are full time workers or retirees. Um, and then uh, just a, a smaller percentage are business owners. <clears throat> Can I interrupt for a question? Mm -hmm. What's the general um, response percentage for surveys in your experience? Like, are, is this a really exceptional response or is it kind of in keeping with the responses that you get in communities to these types of group surveys? Did you want to hear that? I, I heard you inhale, so. <laughs> Sorry. Did I take away your thunder? No. Yeah, no, no, it's very good. It's very good. Um, you know, we see, so, sometimes we see very poor response rates, right? And this is is way above and beyond something like that. Um, I, I think that the, the, the advisory community did a nice job of uh, rolling out a couple of different uh, levels of marketing and over time, right? So we had, if you look at the way the survey results came in, it kind of like this, mm -hmm. because we had that initial wave of first mailing and then it dipped off and we did some more marketing. And I mean, so we, we hit people that maybe didn't see it the first or even the second time, which um, then yeah, I mean, I think as Danielle said, we got a, a nice cross section of the community. The, we, what's interesting about the age numbers is that we have very few respondents under 18 take the survey, but that was to be expected between really the adults, more than those kids. So all of the age brackets are sort of shifted, right, uh, in terms of their percentage of the township. And you look at the 42 and a half median age, well, the median age of the, the survey respondent population, if you take out the 10 or so under 18 kids, is higher. So mm -hmm. I think we got a pretty good uh, bell curve there. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, and I would say too that I, I population-wise speaking for a comparable township, uh, we did the master plan for Holland Township back in, I think it was 2019? It was approved in 2020, but yeah. That's what it was. was. Survey was in 2019. Um, <clears throat> and I, I would say that we had considerably less um, feedback on that, but you know, there, the outreach was a bit different. We did, you know, focus groups, based and stuff like that. So um, in general, this this response rate is is excellent for what typically what we see more or less. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just briefly on households, 47% of uh, respondents have two people living in their household, 18 have four, 13 have three, um, which is pretty consistent with the age groups we've been seeing. Um, you know, maybe some older folks that maybe have adult children or children who live out of the home or maybe children who are in college age. Um, so that's, this is not a, not a huge surprise for what we're looking at um, for the amount of, uh, for household sizes. For respondent location, um, we essentially divided the township into nine areas per the direction from the advisory committee as well. Um, a lot of this is based on, um, you know, road boundaries, the river boundary, or, you know, just physical char characteristic boundaries, such as where the DDA boundary is located or major businesses or the airport, um, you know, important um, geographic features. Um, and they're not equal population. Yes, Sorry. that's correct. So we, should, we did not expect equal response rates from each one. Right. They're not equal population. Um, so from what we saw, uh, most of our responses came from area number two, um, which is this kind of uh, dark red one here in the, oh, you can't see the pointer, um, in the middle there um, on the east side of the river. 22% um, in area one, which is where you're going to see your higher populations of people who reside in the township live in these areas um, anyway. 15% um, in area eight, um, and then so forth. And it should be noted too that um, and the township staff also pointed this out that there, if anybody lives in area number nine, we're not super sure on that. There might be one or two homes, I think, that we've identified. Um, so that's kind of why you're seeing such a low response rate for area number nine. Um, that's kind of going to be where more you have commercial businesses or the industrial park and stuff like that. Actually, there's there's about five single family homes right in Patterson and Burton that are in the township. So actually, the like four or five responses is actually a really good response. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what was yeah the, most of that is businesses right? what's the most populated area was uh, that it's it's uh, one or not two it's two followed by yeah it, 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 it tracks the response rate it's two followed by one followed yeah. by uh, seven and eight you know so right about there yeah and then of course we're seeing three and four are going to be a little bit more you know larger lot less dense population so that's kind of where it drops off a little bit there 
uh, for Cascade's top assets <clears throat> moving into the survey results. Um, number one is natural scenery, unsurprisingly, you know, beautiful river, the hills, uh, safety from crime, also not a shock, you know, safe community, people love to live, work, and recreate here, um, and then proximity to most areas within Greater Grand Rapids. So you have your, your prime geographic location right on the outskirts of Grand Rapids where people can easily commute to many different places for work, um, and then you also kind of have the best of both worlds where you have your natural scenery, but you can get to places where you need to go quickly and easily. Top issues of concern. Um, so this is total for all of the responses that we received, and then we'll kind of break it down a little bit into age groups and then geographic area. Um, too much traffic speeding. Um, traffic speeding, as you can see, <clears throat> came up twice in this top five issues of concern. And then um, traffic congestion also came up on the top five. So as we get further into the discussion of our next steps, we'll talk about um, how that translates into, you know, different, um, how we're going to hone in on these certain areas, such as traffic and safety and streetscapes and things like that. Um, and then lack of village area. This is, of course, important to this group here and where you guys come in and where we can, you know, start working on, on the goals discussion as well uh, for this evening. So, um, of course, a lot of these uh, themes for top issues of concerns and priorities sort of uh, blend together a little bit. And, you know, the DDA certainly has um, jurisdiction to kind of assist uh, with kind of each one of these in their own way. <clears throat> um, and the lack of river and lake preservation efforts um, came in as number four for top issue of concern um, from at least anecdotally the couple board meetings that I've sat in. Um, over the last six months or so, I've been hearing that kind of pop up quite a bit of sedimentation control and trees and branches falling into the river and stuff like that. So um, that'll be something that we'll take a look at through this process. Um, so then this kind of <clears throat> breaks out the top issues of concern by age and, and geography, like I mentioned. Um, I'll just do this. Um, so you can see there are some red circles here where I kind of pulled out um, some of the data that we thought to be a little bit noteworthy and interesting, um, <clears throat> one of which being that too much speeding on major roads was, of course, less of a concern from people who are aged 18 to 29 than people who are older, um, which, of course, is not a huge shock, but, you know, that's kind of where we're seeing a little bit of the data is differing between age groups and what's important to some people. And then, you know, of course, when we have a higher percentage of, um, you know, middle-aged to older folks, they're going to have different priorities than, than the younger folks. Uh, lack of a village um, came in at number four for 70 plus year olds um, that not super different than the rest of the age group, but just something to note that it wasn't in the top three for those people. Uh, lack of river and lake preservation came at number one for the younger folks, which I thought was kind of interesting, um, but also maybe not because our younger generations tend to be a little bit more environmentally aware. Um, so that was uh, an interesting uh, data point. <clears throat> And then decreased safety came in at number two for those same, that same age group, 18 to 29, which is also kind of interesting. Um, but it also, but it kind of came in a bit lower for the other age groups of people that are older. Um, so I, that was kind of, a, and this is safety from crime as well, not speaking like walkability or anything like that. So that was kind of an interesting data point to pull out as well. Um, for area number seven, um, which is that dark purple um, right to the west of the Thornapple River, um, that came at the number four priority. Um, again, not super different than the rest of the geographic areas, but it wasn't in the top three, so which is kind of um, interesting to pull that out, but perhaps it's because a lot of those are residential streets, not certain. Um, Lack of a village came at number five for those folks in area six, um, which is the airport area. Um, not surprising there that maybe those priorities will be a little bit different and for the people who may not live in that area um, because there isn't a huge population there compared to you know one and two. Um, let's see, lack of river and lake preservation came, at, um, came in at the number one um, concern um, <clears throat> for area five. Uh, which is the light purple um, sort of on the south side there, um, which of course is understandable given that this majority of this area is bordered by the river. Um, <clears throat> and loss of character um, 
like so that uh category is more so the uh, loss of care lot of loss of the township's character due to rapid growth and development um or perhaps you know allocating uh residential and commercial growth and development to appropriate areas um so that concern came at number um number four for those folks who are in area number three which is the um the blue area that you see there um, so of course that those areas, given their more rural nature, it makes sense that they would be a little bit more concerned with, you know, rapid residential development um, coming into the township. And then for top priorities, uh, this is total for all of the um, over 1800 responses that we've received, creating a downtown village at number one. Um, this is exciting to see probably for this group and, um, you know, we're excited to be part of this conversation with you guys too. Um, so this will be a really important part of this and piece of this strategic plan moving forward. Not raising taxes, unsurprisingly, came in at number two. Um, you know, not necessarily something that, you know, and, and we actually did talk about this at the um, advisory committee that maybe there could be some sort of uh, campaign or advocacy on the township level to notify people, of, you know, here's what percentage of your taxes go here. This is where this, you know, so just more of awareness here rather than, you know, the township making a vow to never raise taxes again, because that probably isn't uh, very logical. Um, <clears throat> allocating and planning residential growth in appropriate areas came in at number three. Um, unsurprisingly, you know, that kind of comes into planning and zoning, our um, growth, uh, smart growth, things like that. Um, creating community gathering space, which is also probably important to this group as well. Um, along the same vein as the creating downtown village, working on that community gathering space for events, concerts, uh, you know, 4th of July parades, things like that. Um, <clears throat> and improving existing parks um, came in at number five um, for a top priority, which this was kind of the first section of the survey that we saw parks kind of make a, a jump to the top. <clears throat> And so this will involve conversations, of course, with the Township's Parks Committee. Um, we'll have a parks focus group, um, parks and trails, but that, of course, also, you know, works um, in tandem with what this group is also working on as well with, you know, streetscape or non-motorized connections, um, downtown village connections, sidewalks, um, gathering space, you know, having a cohesive um, parks and trail system kind of, uh, you know, the entirety of the township can uh, put their hands in on that kind of type of project as well. And then top priority um, by age, um, I won't have to go through all of these, but some of the most notable ones, um, planning residential growth um, was a bit lower on the list for those folks age 30 to 49. Um, improving existing parks, parks though jumped um, to the number three priority for that same age group, but it was a little bit less for priority for all other age groups. Um, and then cleaning up the Thornapple River, of course, was at the top of the list for those younger folks, again. Um, planning residential growth um, <clears throat> uh, was a bit lower on the list for those uh, located in area four, uh, which is that um, tannish one on the, on the bottom left, uh, or I'm sorry, the bottom right of that, of the uh, map there. Um, improving existing parks, though, was at the top of their list um, compared to the other geographic areas, which was interesting. Um, encouraging commercial development in appropriate areas, um, that was a little bit higher on the list for those in Area 7. Um, and then uh, streetscapes was important to those folks in Area 2. Um, you know, walkability, bikeability, uh, you know, perhaps reduced um, traffic con congestion, speeds. Uh, traffic calming, you name it. Um, and then cleaning up the Thornapple River um, was at the top of the list for those in area three, um, which is also kind of unsurprising given the uh, more rural nature of that side. Um, so does anyone have any questions on the survey results before we move into next steps? Okay, anyone? Um, and again, feel free to stop me if I'm going too fast. Um, so the next steps in our, um, in our work plan here, um, with the guidance of the advisory committee, uh, township staff, and the township board. Um, so we're planning several strategic planning workshops. So these are six workshops that we've had um, previously identified um, to uh, speak to specific groups um, and township officials and township organizations um, on their specific priorities, their specific goals, and um, 
how those survey how these survey results relate to what they do. Um, so we're hoping the planning commission will be seeing them early March. Uh, Township board also early March on the 9th. Um, and we're hoping to see you folks on the 15th, but perhaps that can be a discussion uh, this evening that will work for you guys. Um, Parks Committee on the 15th, Township staff on the 15th, so that'll be a busy day. Um, and then business leaders in the first week of March. Um, so again, the goal here is to kind of start hammering out the details, um, and then we can start kind of moving into the goals and objectives and the actual meat of the plan once we kind of understand where our challenges are, where our strengths are, um, where these opportunities are, um, and then you know we can create a cohesive vision for the township. Question, can you mm -hmm. back up to the prior slide? Thank you. Sure. Um, that March 15 date is the date of our scheduled DDA meeting. I'm assuming though that you're talking about having some sort of a working session outside of that meeting? Correct. Like okay. we talked about maybe an hour beforehand if that works for this group. Um, and that's something we can, you know, figure out the time if there's a different time that day or maybe a different day that works for uh, folks, but awesome. Thank you. that was just kind of a tentative. That's fine. Um, my other question is, is there, and I asked this at the last meeting, is there a plan to have all of the township commissions, committees, and boards to meet jointly at some point during this process? to align since so many of these things overlap. We talked about that with the advisory committee and we would like to do that. That would be towards the end of the process. Okay. Once we've compiled everything, then we'll bring it to the whole uh, big joint meeting. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And we also ran over the idea of, um, you know, given COVID impacts and, you know, how township staff and board feel about it, but we discussed briefly the option of doing a public open house as well, um, whether it be virtual or, in person, you know, spaced out um, for folks to come back and kind of submit their feedback on almost like the the final version of, or draft I, um, of the plan as well. So there still will be a definitely opportunity. Separate from the focus groups that you're about to talk about. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Which is a great segue into the focus groups. Um, so given the survey results that we received um, with the concern top concerns and priorities, we have truncated those into four major groups. Um, with the direction of the advisory committee and township staff. Um, the first of which would be downtown and village. Um, so this will be uh, bringing folks in who noted that they were interested in further participation on the survey. Uh, we have a whole mailing list of those folks. They'll be receiving a postcard in the mail and an email um, to notify them of these upcoming dates that we have selected. Um, so the topic of discussion there will be, you know, where do you define the village area um, defining those goals and objectives for the village area. How do we get there? Uh, what do people want to see in that? Um, you know, anything that may come up also during that discussion. Parks and trails, uh, we've identified as potentially March 29th. Um, so those folks, again, will be receiving a postcard and email um, noting, you know, if you would like to come and talk about township parks and trails, this is the date for that. Uh, growth management and preservation, um, that kind of goes into um, the township's top priority or identified top priority of allocating commercial and residential growth to appropriate areas. You know, how do we do that? What does preservation look like? Um, rural preservation or ag land preservation and stuff like that. So that'll be kind of the topic of discussion for that one. Um, and then you'll notice that we kind of did a spring break break there from the 29th to the April 14th. Um, and then road safety and streetscapes will be April 21st. Um, so that will kind of speak to those top three out of five priorities that we're dealing with road traffic's um, speeding and congestion. Um, and we're hoping to get representation from the, the County Road Commission, MDOT, um, and applicable parties there as well. So we'll be specifically reaching out to these folks um, so they can attend these uh, focus group meetings. Um, so then once, all of this information is gathered. Uh, we'll calibrate results from uh, the survey, the first survey, which we've already done. And then we'll have the results from the, from the um, several workshops and then these focus groups. And we'll take all of that information and then start drafting the plans, goals, and objectives. So that will be, of course, your tangible action-oriented um, overall uh, direction of where you know, the township will go for the short term. Um, and then from there, of course, that'll be drafting the plan. Well, that, that will, um, you know, of course, be the, the, the meat of the document. Um, and then we'll have the chance to start kind of moving into that once we have a, um, a clear direction um, and clear responses from as many of the township residents as we can 
as many of the township uh, organizations and groups, business leaders, um, committees, boards, and all of that. So um, that's pretty much what we had for our presentation. If anyone has any questions on the timelines of what we're looking at or upcoming activities, uh, Chris and I are always available. Would it be possible to get a copy of the slide deck? Um, even if you're not planning on making it publicly available, it'd be helpful for tracking purposes. If we can, I mean, I took notes on these dates, but sure. sure. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And plus, the, all these dates are going to appear on connectingcascade.com. Terrific. Um, ASAP. Um, I feel like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> as well as the, uh, the results document will also be up there. Um, so they're, all of that will be available. Wonderful. Thank Sandra, you. can we get this up on the, our, the calendar too, those dates on our calendar? Absolutely. Yeah. Danielle, if you could email me um, yep. that information, that'd be great. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. So are you looking for participation from the DEA in any of the focus groups, or are you looking for our contributions to come through what we're about to do here and at our separate work group meeting? Um, I would say both. Um, you're not obligated to come to any of the focus groups, obviously for the general public, but if you guys can make it on March 24th, I think there's a lot of value in you being there to hear what the public has to say um, and to participate sort of in that realm, right? As stakeholders in the community, but not behind this desk, you know, out around the table. So yeah, I think there's a lot of value to that if you can make it on the 24th or any others that may interest you, but certainly in your official the, the March 24th downtown. How comfortable are you that you'll have changed a consensus of all the parties involved? That's an interesting question. We haven't gotten there yet because we haven't gotten to a point where- But your plans are- disagreed yet, right? You're, you're, well, yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll get that. But your plans are to work hard towards consensus in your past history and what you've done in the past. How has that success been? Um, I think we have, we've had a lot of success with that by being patient and iterative, right? So. This is a process where we're gonna keep coming back to you and we keep going back to the public. We've already seen that, right? We have the su survey, then we come to you, then we go to them. So, um, and, and I think the other thing is that uh, there still seem to be some coalescing here, at least around the broad broad topics that people want addressed, right? Uh, I think that came out. That's why we came to these four broad topics. When it comes to the specifics, yes, that's where we're gonna have to work through many disagreements or prioritization, you know, right? Because there may be no wrong answers, just what we're going to do first, right? Um, we'll see. And, you know, ultimately the purpose of this document is to, so that you don't have to have those discussions. So you can say that the strategic plan says we're doing X, then Y, then Z. So this is the time to get that consensus, you're right. So we're going to be working hard on that over the next several months. If I may also add too, I think that the importance of having people involved at, at the beginning of the process will also help, you know, to alleviate concerns of maybe folks not feeling like they were heard or that their voices came in way too late. Um, so that was kind of an approach that we were really striving to take throughout uh, this um, particular public engagement strategy is to make sure that we could get all of our data ahead of time and we can have that start building that consensus early. Something that looking at all these focus groups, I would say that I mean, this is just my point of view. I feel the downtown and village and then road safety and streetscapes are very tied together um, to have a successful plan. And I didn't know what kind of redundant questions or your methodology to approach those focus groups to make sure that we're, we're being very pragmatic in, in extracting the information we need. Yeah. Uh, you know, one thing, and we have to work on the exact specifics of this, but I think that we do want that road safety and streetscapes one to be, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna want to focus on some specific areas and the village is one of them. Um, but we also want the public to tell us what those specific areas are. So we're gonna have some, we're gonna try to organize that night into, hey, let's first have a big picture discussion. Where's the problem in this? And then let's break into groups to discuss how we can solve that. that but that's where some of the downtown road issues, right? Where perhaps the biggest impediment to creating a downtown that you want in the village is Cascade Road itself, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I think those are totally related and that may be another one for the DEA personnel to be at. And just to tack on to that, 
do we think as a group it makes good sense to get input from the Kent County Roads Commission since they are they have a strong seat at the table to implement what we want so having their input maybe with some of the questions that I have you so it, we need to we need partnership to be able to get to where we need to be a thousand percent agree consensus 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 right because I we can come up with all the greatest ideas in the it world for Cascade Road it if the Road work. Commission says no thank you then we're, we're done <laughs> we've, we've experienced that Kent County is better than other counties but we are planning we would very much like to have the Road Commission there on the 21st on April 21st that's that's kind of a that's an important part of this we'd also like to have MDOT there um, that's less important, right? Because they only have the stretch of 28th Street west of 96, but they're, that's not nothing. So um, we'd like to have them there. So we, we are, we'd like to have those, those uh, voices. In the group. And just, it, this is a suggestion from doing past focus groups in my past life, having the road commission maybe have a couple input questions or what they're curious about in the focus groups, that they might, they may have a burning question or something that they would love to organically get to, if you could, in the focus sure. groups. Sure. Um, they may or may not, but having that, they just aren't there listening. It's, they had some input going into it. Well, and it serves a dual purpose, right? Because, uh, and we're, I was told by the road commission by someone there that we are their biggest client. They do the most work for Cascade Township than any other municipality in the county. So, and they have a gray area of what, is allowed and what's not. He has some flexibility. So bringing them here will allow them to see how important it is, how this issue is so that important to us. First, yeah. and, I would, and then we can also see how far we can bend them too. So well, right. both ways. I, I would also suggest that if this date, if April 21st doesn't work for the road commission, we find a date it. that works mm -hmm. for the road commission. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, should, can you email uh, Sandra or Ben too? Because that should, we should get that left right away. Yeah. But you guys yes, should... yeah, we'll make that a top priority to reach out to the road commission before we lock in these dates. Perfect. We'll hold off it on one side, stuff like that. Dr. Siegel? Yeah. yeah, I thought Cascade Road was a state road and not a county road. It, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. old uh, US 16, but it's, yeah, um, it, it's that was the it, original road to Detroit. It was right. And so the county road commission. doesn't MDOT have more jurisdiction over it than the county road commission? They don't. I don't no. know. Okay. It's road commission. I just didn't want to go down that road, road and realize that. To <laughs> Literally. Good clarification. It's been devolved to the road commission, I think, mm -hmm. like a lot of state highways in the mm -hmm. county, actually. But I, I think from a chronological order, that downtown and village discussion first make having that discussion first makes sense, but also creating the vision to share with MDOT and Kent County Road Commission of what we're trying to do of downtown commission, okay. build a vision and a story and, and then engage that story into what we're trying to accomplish in road safety and streetscapes. Mm -hmm. Also, we've had recent accidents and issues in on these major roads where we've had some loss of life and things have happened. I think it's just telling a holistic story as opposed to this is what we want to do and this is one we want to need to do. I think it's a very thoughtful or methodical approach and hopefully we get a, a different outcome. And, and I was, agree uh, that the order of this is correct for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the thought process behind the parks and trails as well because that can easily run into village and downtown, as well as you know, sa road safety and streetscapes too. Where do you guys mm -hmm. want your trails? Where the, can these connections be made? You know, crosswalks, bridges, you know, you name it. Yep. So. Other questions? We will be discussing goals shortly, but if you've got further questions for the McKenna team at this point, please speak down. I hope that you can stay as we discuss the goals yes. because you yes. did assign the homework, really. <laughs> I'm going to throw the blame on you because I sent a reminder email and people no, that's, did the that's homework. Good. So um, you guys are ahead of the other boards and commissions because you started having conversations. Jam some of this stuff into one, one hour with them. We are happy to be the thought leaders here, although we do like to keep meetings to an hour. So, I'll get back, get yeah, back to work now. Yeah. Right. So, with that, if no one has other questions, I think we can move on to the next item on our agenda, which is um, a discussion of the DDA goals. So, this really folds into the conversation that we were just having. Um, and my my challenge before I open this up to comment is that 
everybody has a lot of really great ideas and thank you you, <laughs> um, you know trying to focus and hone in without going in a million different directions i think will be our biggest challenge it won't be lack of of goals or ideas that we have coming from this group because yeah. we've got a lot of really you know really engaged board members who are interested in moving this forward and, so and for the formal workshop and yeah. month, we have some activities planned to try to tease that out right um in terms of kind of generous consensus or figure out who's on board with what so we'll be doing that more formally next time perfect so as you as you might recall we had you would ask the board to come up with and now i can't remember a couple of different project ideas or goals yeah it was sort of your top each of your individually top three things in deviation to do it okay right so Which, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to throw Scott under the bus and we're going to start at that end mm -hmm. and just work our way down since he circulated before this meeting, a lovely typed list as did Michelle of, of ideas and projects. So Scott, would you like to share your thoughts? And I'll be quick because I want to maintain our hour. Um, what I tried to do is very similar to what we just were showing up and hand out a copy of it. I didn't necessarily say like what my top priorities are, but more of just thought starters of just the community that we have. And what I tried to start similar to, to the group that just presented, what are our core assets and as a community? And I, I've heard a couple of times during meetings of Ada has been mentioned and I've said, well, we are distinctly Cascade Township. So who are we? From my point of view, we have core assets, natural beauty, the Thorn Apple River, mature trees. There isn't like a huge density of homes. It's nice and spread out. The one thing that no one else has is a, an airport, um, a substantial airport that's within our district, but it is also underdeveloped. Um, there's a lot of open space, which is a huge opportunity. We have a growing community between the two census periods of 14.8% or over 2,500 people. We have an established bike path system um, that connects to other communities with a lot of opportunity. Um, we have ease of access to the interstate. That's a lot of communities don't have that. Um, we have a very established high traffic retail hotel and restaurant corridor. Just outside my business, 35,000 vehicles per day travel by there. Don't know who counted that, but that's what I've been quoted. Um, we've got proximity to downtown, uh, Grand Rapids, ease of of uh, transportation, diversified commercial sector. The public schools is one of the best in the state. Um, and we do have access to public transit. Detractors, no defined central gathering space, very similar things. No defined city center or downtown, lack of parking in and around the areas that are focused for on, on developing a downtown area. And then we have a high volume and high speed throughway in a corridor that could become the city center. Um, not ideal for pedestrians and have had incidents in the past. Um, and there are certain pockets of the, the DDA that have low occupancy rates um, that need to, we, we need to, to help boost forward. So taking all that into consideration, I tried to throw together a couple ideas of, of the seed ideas. One is, is to partner with, um, uh, basically with large, with the airport and can we attract a large corporation out by the airport? At the end of the day, while that's not the DDA, imagine a large corporation that has access to an airport that can go to every major hub and it's easy to set up a private hangar and have private jets. Imagine the influx of engagement you're gonna see in our retail corridors from restaurants to um, hotels um, to all the businesses, because now you have the influx of, of a large corporation or corporations. Other aspect is there will be a positive impact on home values because a lot of people want the ease of commute and, and what have you of having close proximity to a campus. So I think that's a huge opportunity that can impact all of us with our businesses. Um, also to keep in mind, we have proximity to switch data storage, which is one of the largest data storage companies in the United States there might be something, a technological advantage um, to having that very similar to why some uh, companies have servers next to the New York Stock Exchange. There could be an advantage uh, that we could leverage. The other thing is EV car, electric vehicle car transition is inevitably having, 
happening. We could be a leader in, the, in, in that space where if you do shopping and you have wherever you're at in our community, you can easily charge a vehicle um, and, and have access to that. So there could be a great initiative. Also keeping in mind, we're right off of a major interstate. So there is an opportunity that we can draw people into the community who will invest time into restaurants and into other, other businesses. Um, the other thing, assuming we you know, want to continue the track, great restaurants and what have you, we could build an incubator kitchen in business center, home grow business in Cascade. If they start here, they're likely to set up shop here. And I just threw out just as an idea, there's a, you know, 20, 2899 Thorn Apple River, there's a house there. It's just a great property overlooking the river in our core assets. And it just, it's just an idea that some communities have done and they've been highly successful at it. Um, invest in the trail system, whether it's the charge an EV bike or to create some interesting infrastructure feature that attracts people to our community, making them want to spend, it could be, events or what have you, but it attracts people to come into the community and then want to stay. So it could be infrastructure upgrades to that whole system that really made, makes it exciting for people to engage our community. Um, the other thing is uh, increased recreational usage in our core assets like a tassel park or elsewhere um, where you have like one of a kind, like you start doing river preservation and increase the, the fish that are there, create fly fishing or what have you. It could be a destination. You could reimagine um, the bridge that goes over the Thorn Apple River and create it almost where it, it reaches out. You know, it, it's a, it widens the bridge and you can almost walk out and overlook the water and make it this very distinctive, unique experience or it could be because we have a dam there that produces electricity and have this interactive thing where elements of the park are powered by electricity, but it's so one of a kind and it engages people to come into the community. And the last is, is one that could be just as more people, and this is gonna be a growing trend that are working from home, they're gonna wanna go the green spaces and creating very interactive, peaceful spaces that have public Wi-Fi, electrical outlets. It's, makes people want to engage the public spaces for a longer period of times. And by spending more time in our community, they're more apt to spend, spend money on our cafes and our restaurants and other places. I threw some stats in the back. It was you know, great reminders that we have um, Lake Michigan Credit Union with their major campuses in the area. There are major diverse corporations and groups in our community um, that could be great partnerships and things to think about what their visions of growth are that might fit into an overall picture. So again, a lot of seed ideas to kind of, you know, help get the flywheel moving with thoughts. Just slightly more than three. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's okay. This is all, it's phenomenal. It's Thank sad. you for putting that together. And that's, I, I've given them a hard copy so that they have that cool. as well. All right, Michelle, I, normally I'd be nervous, you know, saying, okay, you're next, but you've also typed up a, a list of great points. I so. have to, I, that's how my brain works, I'm visual. So, um, and this actually came in our last meeting, Scott brought up something, he was talking about infrastructure. And um, it got me thinking about, I mean, mine is much more sort of internally focused in terms of an operations way for the DDA board and how we function um, sort of on a month to month basis. So this was really um, last summer, we had a meeting and at the time I asked about um, we were talking about the strategic plan and I said, well, you know, maybe the DDA should have a strategic plan. And, um, and we talked about, well, you know, the TIF plan was part of that. And, you know, when I went through the TIF plan, it, it's a, it's a great project plan really is what, you know, and talks about the projects, what they are and how they're going to be financed or how much they are in timelines and things like that. So, um, being a novice in this whole, you know, just starting last year, I did some very informal research on DDAs and you know, kind of how they work and what the operations are like and things like that. So um, what I found was most of them, a majority of them either have something called a strategic plan or an operations plan. 
that really outlines, you know, basically what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, and also um, has some component parts that helps the board in terms of, you know, long range, how do we get people to join the board? It's about marketing to the, the community, things like that. So um, that, and, and I want to say, because this is all bulleted, it's not a finite, this is not a finished plan. This is pure, a template. We're brainstorming, right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just a template. And, and, and I went to the next level of more detail really as examples of, and to clarify like what the, the bigger bullet point was and what I was talking about. So I, I'm gonna, because there's a lot of information there, unless you want me to go through every little thing, I brought hard copies. It, and it's emailed to everybody it, too. It, I, everyone did receive an email. That was that was very helpful. And I some of these might be, as you said, more for DDA strategic planning, which I think is a wonderful idea. I don't know that it's necessarily needs to be something that's part of the strategic strategic planning process that McKenna is handling, or whether that's something we want to add to our agenda. Separately, I mean, I think but I think good. giving them a copy would be very yeah. helpful. And this really follows. I mean, this is for us then to follow suit from the strategic exactly. plan and yeah. giving us guidance on those things then that we want to work at. But it also sets up a framework for how we do that. I like that a lot. I like. I think that that's a great jumping off point for us after that process concludes. Thank you so much. Sure. And honestly, that can be one. You could use process decided one of your goals is to step back and decide who you are, right? I mean, that it may be that one of your goals is, hey, we're going to redo the streetscape at 28th and Cascade to make more pedestrian friendly. But you may have to take a step backwards. So, but we'll see. That's part of consensus building because some of you may be ready to dive in and we'll see who is who is and who's not. Terrific. All right, Corky, you, this is your first meeting. So you weren't here when we assigned the homework? <laughs> Boy, I get lucky. But, but please. I couldn't have any more than what these two had. All right. I, they did however, cover a lot, didn't however, they? However, having been here, I moved into Cascade in 1979, and the quaintness of the village is what drew me here from Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. What I would hope that we would do is remember we are Cascade. We're not Ada. We're not Grand Rapids, we're not Holland, we're Cascade. And the people who moved here, who are living here, are here for a reason. And if we keep that thought in our mind as we develop the process ahead, do the plans, gain the consensus, because without a consensus, nothing's ever gonna happen, is it? Right. So my thought would be, as we move along, let's keep Cascade, Cascade. Like that, I totally agree. I agree too, Very lovely. Cool. That's wonderful. Thank you. That's all I got. That's enough. That's more than enough. That's yeah. great. Mic drop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, we're gonna. You guys have it easy down at the end over there. You can say, yeah, it's all. Diddle. All my ideas have already been. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, so um, Steve, who couldn't be here tonight, sent an email with some thoughts that I'll paraphrase here. Um, his were focused on drawing people to the area for recreation purposes and similar to what Scott had said, you know, those people, once they're here for recreation, will then stop and shop at businesses and it will help to drive up the economics of our DEA. So some of the, um, the more specific examples he gave were to um, create a, a, a recreational space, you know, perhaps in Tassel Park or somewhere else. And there have been talks about doing something in other areas of the township, like soccer fields, baseball fields, um, volleyball courts, sand volleyball courts, um, maybe putting in some additional parking where those are located. And one of the points that he made was um, at the, the baseball field on Thornapple River, there's very little parking there. And so it's, it's hard to draw a big crowd without you know, having people have to park in neighborhoods and and then walk over there. So there's certainly you know space for adding that, um, and also an amphitheater for that type of recreational activity as well. Um, let me see here. And he he also raised that you know some of this may involve purchasing private property or private public partnerships um, and deciding you know where those activities might be best for creating that sort of draw. And I think that I've covered everything that he had in his email. 
and mine, I, I was, uh, I tried to stay a little bit broader with my goals and some of it is, is certainly repetitive of what you've already heard, but my first goal would be to implement the um, community placemaking initiatives. Right. And that could cover everything from, you know, gathering space to, you know, sports or to, you know, events or concerts or, you know, spaces that are temporary using tactical urbanisms, but to actually have a plan in place to create those spaces. Um, the next kind of folds into what Scott said to ensure um, continued, um, oh wow, I can't even read my own, my own handwriting <laughs> here, um, continue um, the vitality of the DDA economy. And whether that's through an incubator or whether it's, you know, creating and uh, preserving space for job growth in some other way, uh, through marketing, you know, targeting businesses that might come to the area to fill some of those empty spaces, marketing and recruitment can be, you know, part of that initiative. And then the third goal of mine would be to update the complete streets plan, which folds into several of those, um, of the broader goals that we have, frankly, because it will involve the village, the streets, and pathways, and maybe even parks. And I can't remember, Sandra, when, how old our complete streets plan is. 2014. So it's, and again, that that is something that we yeah. just cannot do without the road commission's involvement. <laughs> so that would be an idea that would be ripe for conversation at that specific focus group meeting. Is that a DEA document or a township document? It's collaborative. It was the okay. D. It was all of the boards and committees. Was uh, it definitely planning commission and DDA? And and I thought the road commission had participated. They signed off they on some of the initiatives. They sat in on some of the right because again, we can come up with the greatest ideas in the world, and if the road commission says no way, then. We're, we're not going to be able to do it. So it's consensus building, as you said. It has to be a collaborative document. I would love to see all of the township boards, you know, or at least the relevant ones, you know, the township, the planning commission, the DDA, all be involved, parks and rec. If we're going to be talking about pathways to those spaces, that seems also to be something that we would include in that as well. All right, I'll pass. The, I think pass all mine are, mine are covered. I think, um, except for... I guess number one for me would be defining downtown, def defining the village would be th that has to happen because we can't build it if we don't know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And then secondly, something we didn't talk about was possibly private funding. I mean, we're, there's some of the things we want to do are really expensive and yeah. maybe looking at some of our resources within the community that aren't active in, in this that maybe could help, mm -hmm. you know, they have to give donate a certain amount of money anyway every month. Maybe they would invest in a park or, you know, some more private funding. To be looking at. That could be philanthropic, but it could also be profit driven. Right. You could you could partner with you know if you want like they're talking about incubators or things like that, or we're or we're talking about some of the tired strip malls, or if we want to do something really big with uh, you know the shopping center at the end of Twenty Eighth Street as part of a downtown vision. You know, all of this is something where a developer could end up making could should make a profit at the end of it. And you guys can juice that. And that is, in fact, you know, your role. So, yeah, that's where like, private, private funding comes in yeah. both those days. Selling a brick. <laughs> Selling a brick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really expensive brick, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I think short term, I would like to see us use professionals. I'm biased, but I think you guys are doing a great job. But I don't have the expertise or the knowledge to for the for a lot of these projects, we don't have staff that has that, but profession, if we bring in professionals, I think we'll be able to get a lot more done. We're already doing this, but bring in, get that public consensus, which I know is underway, but it's so important. And I remember, because you won't, there's like a, well, here's an example. Before I started as supervisor last fall, I remember um, the board meeting, well, that Tuffy Park plan, where the Tuffy is right now, there was the, it was the Thursday before Labor Day where I saw that open house to go, you know, public input for the plans. So that Thursday, and there were two time slots and they were both during the day, Thursday before Labor Day. And I went to those and there was a handful of people there and there were the two plans. And I wasn't part of the DDA then, but I assume that this was, you know, brought up at, at the DD, through the DDA. Um, and the plans in my mind were very similar, didn't take into account that that, that intersection is busy and, there was so much going on in that little space with the um, 
what was it, food trucks and like they're playing food trucks and a farmer's market on that little corner that didn't have much additional parking. And then in my mind, it, the focus was on that corner rather than the beautiful river and the landscape. So when I saw the memo then that followed, so you had that small two sessions the Thursday before Labor Day for public input. Then when I saw the subsequent memo that staff prepared where the, the plan went to the board for approval. And again, this is all before I started, but this is a great example of it and something we can do better on. The staff memo that was prepared said that, you know, here's our recommended plan. And this plan was, was based on um, public input, re input received from the public. And in my mind, I was like, it is not based on public input at all. It was created, you know, by professionals. And then the public input was literally two sessions with a handful of people the Thursday before Labor Day tacked on at the end. So as a resident who's about to start as supervisor, I thought what an insincere statement, not at the DTA, not by any members of the DTA, but in that memo to say that that was created by citizen you know, public input. Because in my mind, it absolutely was not, even when you say it in the memo. So then I remember watching a DDA meeting later and member and Steve said, Sandra, what was, going, what was, why didn't the board, it was kind of like surprised that, oh, the board rejected yet another plan, you know, just why? And the response I heard was, well, you know, traffic, blah, blah, blah. But in my mind, I'm watching a process that didn't need to, you know, it was a process failure. It wasn't, the DDA kind of was left wondering what happened, what went wrong. The board, no. And, and it was just silly because you didn't have that, there wasn't really a basis of, it wasn't based on public input, even though that's what the memo said. And in my mind, we can do a lot of really cool things, but if we don't have the public behind it, it's just going to be that. You can't, it, it, that wasn't really based on public input. That so was is, your, plan. is your suggestion one, and it's probably both of these things, to strive to have better transparency with individual projects and to communicate? Because I, I think that McKenna's done a the terrific They've job great. We're doing it. in so communicating. The, so part of the strategic plan, and this will focus on our planning in general. To be a success, to have successful projects that aren't just like signage and we are Cascade, we have to have a community support. And I think we're already in the middle of doing that. I just think it's important to continue that. I think an example of where we didn't do that, they, we meaning at the township level, not the DDA, I think the DDA, I, I, what I saw is they kind of were confused and didn't know why, you know, what happened. But the township can do a much better job actually seeking the info, which is what we're doing now. I think professionals, engaging professionals, engaging the public short term. We're doing both those things, but I think we need to continue doing it. Um, and then also, I just agree with Corky. Like, I think we, we're a residential community. People live here because of the green space, the, the nature. We are like kind of a respite from our jobs. And I don't think we are a, in a previous plan, I think it was Williams and Company, I saw or it's somewhere, one of the previous plans possible convention center like I think we as Cascade I know it, it was just random I saw I when I was remember that when I was preparing for supervisor and I was like what the heck why do we how are we going to compete with downtown we I think if we just focus inward on serving our residents and serving our businesses and saying and enhancing what we have instead of these generic growth 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 I think I think if we focus on maintaining that quaint character that makes Cascade a great place to live and not chase, oh, the, we're always going to be pressured by the county. We're going to be pressured by developers. That 28th Street suburban or sorry, strip mall is, is going to be encroaching. But I think if we protect and focus on a, on a village area, um, I think that the focus in past has been, at least at the staff level, outward. And I think it needs to be done. Well, and I think that your your concerns in large part can be addressed by both Michelle and Corky's points. If, we're, if we, as a DDA, are going to be engaging in our own strategic planning, then we will, as a board, be aligned in how yep. we do this. So, so a good plan with public support, public meaning the residents who and businesses that are here, not county. I mean, there's we're always going to have constant pressures from outside. But I think as a as a serving the township is serving those people that are already here. All right. Thanks. No, my soapbox, basically what Corky said. All right. A lot of this is ditto, you know, as far as developing the town downtown atmosphere being more quaint, it, it all really hinges on the road commission because we just need to slow traffic. My my business is on Cascade Road and cars are going 60 miles an hour by it all the time. 
And uh, so I think that it has to, that issue really plays from there. So we can make all the plans that we want, but we first really, I think, need to do a emotional sell job to the road commission, not just say, this is what we want to do, but you alluded to the emotional appeal. And I think that's how you're going to get more results. And, uh, and also more community spaces for, um, uh, this is more out of the downtown uh, uh, DDA authority, but just, you know, uh, again, uh, volleyball areas, um, soccer fields, you know, little small softball fields for, for little kids. So those are the, the, the main things that I focus on. Thank you. Rishi. So I've got um, a few things. One was um, a community center. Again, we talked about that and getting space where events can happen and bring the larger community. This, this will tie into my last point too, but to bring the community together and be able to hold events. Cascade or Ada did something similar at um, Roselle Park with that building. And, you know, there's always activity there. There's always events going on. They think it kind of brings the community together a lot of times. And it's connected to the park, which is kind of nice for outdoor events and things of that nature. So I think something like that is, is, is kind of important to have uh, in Cascade. Uh, second thing was, and it's just ironic that it was in this slide, was um, kind of fostering our retirement community and retirement centers within Cascade. I know we have a number of them already, but it was interesting to note that 32% of our um, population is retired and 60% is over 50. So you want to retain not only the 50 and over, but the people that are retired. And I, being 45 and watching my parents get older as well, I would like to, it would be nice to have more younger people moving in that can rest assured that there's adequate access to reasonable retirement living so your parents can retire and watch your kids in the comfort of your own community. So having that generational connection, I think that Cascade is really known for. I mean, I grew up here and it's amazing how many families still have the kids stay in Cascade, their parents are in Cascade, and now the third generation is coming also wants to live in Cascade to continue to foster um, that environment of the values that are connected to the family. And that's, I think, the best part about Cascade. Um, and my last point was, and this is a broader conversation, obviously, is to foster diversity within our community. And by that, I mean engaging um, some of the big employers and capitalizing off of some of the big employers that we have. Amway brings in a lot of international talent, uh, whether it's IT, supply chain. Um, as a business, we really capitalize on that because these are high paying jobs and we cater to those with the drinks <clears throat> business that I have, but also it makes me think that these guys are buying houses that are a million plus dollars or half a million or more. How can we attract them here versus Ada versus East Grand Rapids? A lot of these communities are international or ethnic communities. They're Indians, they're Asians, they're um, Hispanic, um, they're from different parts of the world. And what those communities value, I can't tell you how many times converse, this conversation I've had is, hey, I've got an Indian family from a retailer that I've got a Indian family moving in, where's there a concentration of Indian community? I'm like, there is, and there's like 50 of us in Cascade <laughs> kind of spread out. But, you know, I think it's a, it's a, a bigger topic. I think that as Grand Rapids gains in prominence um, nationally and set to take on it, we're already one of the most major cities in, in Grand Rapids, in, uh, in Michigan, is that you, you'll find that to attract diverse talent, you have to have a a community that fosters diversity and is engaged actively in diversity, not just a passive role. So just a brainstorm of how to attract some of that talent and keep it in Cascade versus losing it to a East Grand Rapids or mm -hmm. an Ada. So just, a, just food for thought. Great thoughts. Mm -hmm. So do you have any questions for us at this point or, or more homework? <laughs> <laughs> this is all really good stuff. I, I, there's tons of stuff, which is great. I think we're going to try to do in March is crystallize it a little bit. Obviously, we won't get to like a final plan, but uh, take ways to take some of the ideas that were presented by different people, uh, put them together. Okay, these things go together. They can reinforce each other. So into one goal with the number of objectives underneath it, right? And we'll start to develop that. Uh, and I, like I said, because you guys are a little ahead in the process, some of the other boards and commissions think we'll be able, able to get a little farther down the road with you, got you folks. 
Whereas um, for them, they're going to have to do this conversation, <laughs> you know. Um, but I think it's all fantastic stuff. I think uh, there's an overall theme that's jumped out to me, which is that you all seem to have a vision of this DBA being a driver for some big picture success of the township, right? Um, we've worked with, uh, with DDAs in the past that have that. We've also worked with DDAs that don't and are much more uh, interested in what color this year's summer banners are, right? Which is, a, a, you know, that stuff is relevant, right? It's tactical urbanism, it's all relevant. It's all, but like having that broader vision of what are we and what can we do with, uh, you know, actually, it came up with the not raising taxes thing. You guys have quite the trust because of the t the TIF capture that you have, right? Uh, coming from national and international businesses along a regional corridor to be spent here, right? That's important. So making that making that investment pay off broadly is very important. I heard that that seemed to come out as a theme. So we'll have to talk about how we get uh, how we go from you know vision to action. I'm sorry, Lee. I've Thanks. got a pure teacher conference. So thank you. Great. But no, I think it was really, really great uh, conversation. Thank you everyone for doing the homework and um, because I, I think that, that moves us forward. So. Thank you for being here. This has been this has been really helpful and I'm excited to see where this goes. And I'll ask, I think probably the best way to um, to schedule our planning meeting would be to have Sandra send out a doodle poll to see if we can find a date and a time that worked for everyone. And if if we don't do it immediately before our board meeting on that day, we may be able to do it by a video, by a Zoom. And so that may give people a little bit more flexibility um, because I, it, it may be unrealistic for people to arrive an hour early. And both. frankly, it may take more than an hour. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. that's true. We don't want to push into your agenda. Plus actually the 15th, Danielle is going to be here, but I, that's an issue for me. So. And you've got a lot stacked yeah. up on that day. So if we need to, to <clears> move it, well, you, to a different day. The Mark's committee is beginning theirs at 7 a.m. We're not going to do that. <laughs> so we are, they, their meetings are usually at 8 a.m. So okay. like they're meeting an hour early at 7 a.m., which is how we're squeezing all that into the 15th is that we're going to start first thing. But uh, yeah, that would be great. And actually, if you put us on that doodle poll, then we can all organize Absolutely. when that makes sense. Perfect. Yeah, and if I, you don't get a consensus, then we'll come up with more. Yeah. yeah. I can work with you on some dates and times um, before I send out the doodle poll. It's well. a good place so. to start. And maybe and, indicate and we can, uh, in the doodle poll, which would be available to do virtually as opposed to being in person. We could offer both. Okay. If, okay. If, okay. Um, if you'd like, I mean, we could do a virtual aspect and. Yeah, that's um, true. I guess even if it is scheduled right before our board meeting, because you'll be you'll be in Florida, so Sunshine. right. Yeah. So that that yeah. Pina coladas. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to get some fun cakes and and um, custard to make up for our lack of pina coladas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Unless you Thank have you other much. questions for us. Well, I think I think we're. Uh, we're set. Appreciate the conversation. We'll move forward. Great. Yes. Thanks thank so you much. guys very thank much. Thank you for your time. Yes. Thanks. Anytime. Thank you. Great work. Um, any other comments regarding um, discussion of DDA goals at this point from the board before we move on? All right. Hearing none, let's move on to Article 8, which is the rapid contract update. Welcome to the podium. <laughs> thank you. Just really quick, um, we did have our um, bus committee meeting the other day. And if you recall, our contract with the Rapid is expiring on May 9th. And so in order to move forward uh, with their scheduling, uh, the Rapid needs a decision from us, from the DDA board uh, at the March 15th DDA meeting. So that is the deadline. So uh, the committee did meet the other day. We met with Max uh, as well from the Rapid to discuss the details, um, just to uh, throw questions, you know, kind of a question and answer session. Um, so what we decided is we are putting together and sending out a short survey um, to the businesses asking for their inputs. And then we will follow up the survey with um, phone calls as well as some in-person visits uh, to get as much feedback uh, as possible. Um, the ITP board will meet February 23rd and uh, then they will provide the bus committee with uh, some additional information um, 
after that meeting, just regarding the, the funding and a copy of the contract and so forth. And then the bus committee, we just set up um, another meeting before our March 15th DDA meeting, uh, I think February, February 28th, I think is when that the bus committee meets again. Um, to, to, to look over the, you know, the survey results and, and uh, the contract and just funding uh, options. And then of course that will come to everybody, uh, the entire DDA board at your March 15th meeting. So Jennifer, um, Scott, if you have anything to add, feel free. I do not. Are there any questions from the board? Yes. When was the last time that we had an <laughs> update on the uh, ridership uh, we, I did receive a new one for uh, at least 2021 did we not we did yep so um we could get that information out so okay yep other questions comments even though I'll be in Florida I have this is one that interests me a lot uh, you know, I, and I don't know what the rule is for participation by Zoom. I don't know that you can vote by Zoom is the yeah, problem. But I can give input. You, you can, can certainly give input. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course, always. Right. right. Yeah. You just will not be able to vote. So, right. yeah. Questions? Comments? All right. Um, moving on then to Article 9, any other business? So our landscape maintenance bid is uh, due March 1 at 2 o'clock. I guess I'd like some uh, DDA board input as far as when we get those in. Certainly any of you are welcome to sit in on that bid opening as well. But um, would you like a small contingent of the board to review any of those bid documents and be, then take it to the entire board? Or would you like the entire board to review all of the RFP? I mean, how... Are there volunteers who would like to review <laughs> the bid documents or work with Sandra to narrow the field? I'll help you. I mean, I, I feel oh. like if we narrow it down to three, so that I mean, and as long as they're local and they right, all the people that are sitting in are local and they actually live in Cascade, right? Yeah, yeah. I think perfect. you have your your did, working. Did group. you say Michelle? You yes, Okay, thank well. you. Thank you very much for doing that. And then yes. just bring it to the board, whatever recommendations your smaller group has. Yeah, I'm hoping um, I'm hoping to move it fairly quickly and to have that to the board at the March 15th meeting as well. Um, just It'll to give the company, yeah, it will be. So just to give the companies um, some time to, um, you know, do whatever they need to do as far as inventory and right. uh, mm -hmm. so forth. So Have you been getting a lot of, Feedback or so um, I've heard from two companies who said they're just not responding at all because they are already very busy and short staffed and they just don't feel like like they can tackle this so okay. um, uh, two of the companies I sent it to are partnering. Um, uh, I heard from another one who said they will be sending something in so I hope we have, you know, a good pool to mm -hmm. choose from so perfect yeah. Um, and so then certainly I'll get a hold of, uh, you know, Michelle and <coughs> Renee, and we can figure out what we need to go from there. So um, at the last meeting, we talked about um, changing up the vi uh, business spotlights and doing some video shoots uh, that we were going to put on the website and Facebook. And um, so we had two last week. They were wonderful. They were really fun. And uh, so we will be expanding those uh, as time goes on. Renee was one of those and uh, Scott and Christine. Um, so they were kind of our guinea pigs to start with. So good choice. <laughs> we, we had a good time. So um, we hope to do probably seven or eight more and then we'll start putting those out and then we'll just keep um, you know, growing that, that pool. So um, you will be hearing from me and uh, so be prepared. <laughs> Um, and then just our, our next meeting, March 15th at 530. That's all I have. <clears throat> anyone else have anything they'd like to discuss? I just have one little quick question. Does anyone know what, um, what happened with that fire that the building that's for sale? I think if it is, and is it still for sale? The building that's right behind, right, right here. Yeah, the um, motion picture it, it had a for sale sign on it before it burned down, and now it's burned down with a for sale sign on it, and it literally butts up to this property. Oh, no. So I'm wondering if we should look into that. Yeah, we'll have to check in with the property owner. Um, I don't know where they're, where they stand right yeah. at this time, um, but we mm -hmm. can certainly reach out to them and 
find out what their status it's prime, is. It's prime real estate in the village mm -hmm. or in our maybe village. True enough. <laughs> I only know what I've seen on social media. So, oh yeah, right. So it's all false, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let us know if you need anything from us as you check in on that. Okay. Uh, other questions, comments, items that the board would like to discuss? It's All been right. enjoyable. I'm glad. We try to be nice. <laughs> We're more relaxed than some of the other boards. We'll go that far. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been enjoyable. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay. All right. Um, hearing no other items, I will entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting. Second. Are you going to make the motion? I didn't make yeah. it. False. <laughs> so moved. We're going we're gonna to count this that as a motion. So Would moved. you like to second that so motion? Yes. All, right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion adjourned. We need some gavel for that. Thank, Thank you, you very everybody. much, everyone. Thank you. Not quite an hour, but close. Oh. It was a, it, you know what? It was a very fruitful meeting. Mm -hmm.